Hi, good evening. Uh, normally, I thought after lunch was a, a little bit of a tough time to present, but it looks like tea time is as well the same. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, E4M, for this opportunity. Uh, may the last five, ten minutes that I thought probably just run you through uh, our journey and uh, sort of what Kevin Kerr has been through the last uh, 30 years plus. So yeah, it's been a journey where we've been building brands, building brands with uh, purpose and uh, promise. Just a glimpse, I don't know how many of you guys know, I'm sure uh, you should be knowing about this, but it's a company that's been on for the last 30 plus years. Uh, we are present today around plus 30 plus countries uh, with a portfolio of around 15 plus brands and we present in around eight categories. So what started off as a, a single brand sachet led company today is probably uh, up into 15 brands working across eight categories. And I think this is what excites us and probably I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes just explaining about what we do to drive some of these brands and uh, possibly share some of our success stories with you. Uh, many of them are known, many of them are known uh, having been for a long time. But I guess this is one more opportunity that we probably proudly would like to present to you guys. So brand anchors, we've got 15 plus brands, a portfolio that cuts across eight categories. What is it that we look at? I think there are three unique things that we look at from a brand perspective. One, disruptive innovation. Two, a unique value proposition that the brand needs to bring to the table. And three, of course, staying relevant and meaningful. And I think these are three anchor points that's always driven our thought processes around brands and the way we want to actually build the brands. And uh, some of them have really stood out in these anchor points that we've used over the last 30 plus years. Disruptive innovation, I think I'm sure most of you guys here in the room would, would know about some of these brands. Chick, for example, has been the sort of uh, innovator as far as Sashay is concerned. I think if not for this brand, if not for Sashay, many of us wouldn't be seeing the FMCG industry the way it is today. I think the revolutionary, revolutionary idea of Sashay and the ability to proliferate it into the mass market, I think that's been one of the biggest disruptive innovations that the company's laid its foundations on. The brand has been on for the last 30 plus years, still continues to be strong in the mass market. And the Sashay revolution, as we see, is sort of spread across the country across the globe today. The second brand that we're quite comfortable and we're quite proud about is Indica. Again, it, it goes back to a sort, of a, a, a sort of a revolution that we brought in. I don't know how many of you guys, looking at the age group, I'm not sure whether this is the right target audience, but still, uh, I think the brand talks to a lot of youngsters and all, a lot of graying people like me, but I think the revolution that we brought in again was in the sachet part of it. The ability to sachetize the whole hair color category one and two, instant ability, ability to bring it an instant flavor, rather than waiting for two hours, three hours, which is the traditional method that used to happen. Again, based on a disruptive innovation. The third brand that we proudly look at from a disruptive innovation perspective, and it continues to be disruptive today, is the Kevin's milk brand, Milkshake brand. While the brand is present in the dairy segment, the milkshake category in particular has been sort of one of the key differentiated factors that's helped us grow this brand. And I think uh, it's just not a milkshake, I think it's, it's about, uh, you go ask the kids, I'm sure some of us would do that, you go ask your kids in your home, at least in the South, I think it's a brand that stands out in terms of the way the kids love this brand. I think again, based on disruptive innovation. So of the three brand anchors that we spoke, spoke about, disruptive innovation has been one consistent trait that we've looked at across the brands, we've looked at as a company to be able to help us grow some of these brands. The second one is a unique value proposition. We may not be disruptive, we may not be innovative per se, but I think if the brand sustains a very unique value proposition, be it on pricing or be it on the way it's been able to actually talk to the consumer, I think one of the brands that stands out for us in our portfolio today is the Spins brand. And it's, it's, it's sort of a skincare brand, morphing itself into skin and fragrances brand. But I think beyond the brand, the key point is I think this brand has been able to sort of 
have a unique value proposition that delivers to the consumers. So where sometimes disruption doesn't work, our very strong belief is that if you've got a unique value proposition that the brand is able to deliver consistently, that helps. Garden, again, is one of our food brands, food and snacks brands, well known in the Mumbai segment, the Western markets. It still stands tall in terms of the way the Mumbai art taste comes in for the brand. And I think, which is what I said, it may not be disruptive in that segment, but if, as long as you're able to actually give it unique flavor, a unique sense of value proposition to the consumers, I think the brand stands tall. The third one, staying relevant and meaningful. This is one brand I think over the last uh, 30 plus years has actually st stood the wherewithal of the entire market. And it's one of the market leaders in South today. Uh, what started off as just a goodness of tradition brand today cuts across from the mother to the daughters. And I think this is one brand we probably would have seen generations change, but still the core of the consumer sticks to the brand. And I think today it stands tall in terms of market leadership in South and expandable into the non-South markets as well. But I think the key thought process we had behind this brand is keep this brand relevant even if the consumers were to change. While the core of the consumers don't change, as one segment of consumers move out and a new segment of consumers come in, I think the brand still stays relevant and meaningful. In the past couple of years, we've seen this brand really take market share. And I think we are proud to see this brand stay relevant, meaningful, and I'm, I'm sure many more decades to come and the brand stands tall. Well, that's it from our uh, brand's perspective. I think from a company perspective, if you look at, and this is a buzzword I'm sure most of you guys would be hearing from many FMCG companies. Uh, we were a startup, but a startup which started off with a sachet, moved into multiple sets of brands. Today, I think we've sort of moved into the D2C space, right? The direct-to-consumer space, uh, I think it is something that most companies look at. I think we've been sort of been able to make this change, and I think this is one of the spaces that the company in the coming years would be very strongly anchored around. The core of the brands don't change, whether it is a D2C brand, as you call it, based on channel, or whether you call it as a traditional general trade-based brand, or mass market brand. The core of the brands don't change, but I think what changes today is the ability to reach consumers through digital media, the ability to be able to service consumers to different sets of channels. And I think that's where probably today, a lot of companies are involving, putting in the might, and we've been sort of successfully doing that. So we have, while we've been a company that's been there for the last 30 plus years, dozens of brands plus, we today have a D2C accelerator or we have a startup accelerator within our own company. The accelerator meant to behave like a startup, not like an incumbent company or not like a, a old age economy, but a, a new startup which sorts of looks at abilities to get into new channels, abilities to get into new categories, and of course be able to directly service consumers as well. I think we've been fairly reasonably successful in that with a couple of brands. Bikers is one of the brands that we've launched in the last uh, couple of quarters. It continues to accelerate. The other one that we've done is Buds and Berries, again, a, a, a D2C brand which is focused on the digital e-commerce space and we've been able to sort of create. Uh, the reason I touched upon this is I think it is important today for brands and for companies to be able to look at the changing landscape. While a lot of brands continue to be relevant, continue to stay relevant, like I, I, I pointed out with a couple of our brands, I think it's also equally important that as the consumer changes, as the consumer reach, and the way consumer consumes some of these products change, it's also important that companies have a look at their channel strategy, uh, at their product portfolio strategy. And this is one of the things that we've been able to successfully demonstrate. What we, what we, what we are clear as a company is, Unlike most other of our uh, peer companies, we look forward to create more brands, we look forward to create more products, rather than taking over companies or taking over acquiring more brands. So in a way, we pride ourselves in sort of innovating and building new brands, and we continue to do so as the years come in. So summarized, in a, in a way, I think our story has been one of purpose and promise. Uh, a lot of brands in the last few years that we've sort of created, a lot of legacy brands that we sort of continue to nurture and build, get the consumer franchise, based on three very clear anchors as far as the brands are concerned. One, disruptive innovation. Two, 
a unique value proposition that makes us stand apart as far as the consumer is concerned. Three, making the brands relevant and meaningful. I think that's what I, I thought I'd share in the, in the small uh, period that, uh, time that was alerted. Quite happy to share with you and quite proud that uh, I've been able to represent a company that sort of started off revolutionizing the sachet. Today it's amongst the, it also holds amongst a lot of premium brands in its portfolio. And I think it stretches across a spectrum, across eight categories, and I think we look forward to work with all of you. And thank you, E4M, for this opportunity. Thank you.